Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over some different things that you may notice with different surface types. Maybe you may think there's a defect in your pool. So I'm going to cover some common things that you're looking at. And some things may be defects, but most of the time they're just common things that you would find in your particular pool surface. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. Let me start with a plaster pool or otherwise known as a Macrite or cement pool. And these are all used interchangeably. There's a little bit of a difference between a diamond bright or quartz pool and a plaster pool. Mainly the quartz finish is a little bit different mixture. There's a quartz aggregate added to it to the Portland cement that they would use for the plaster. So it's similar but yet a little bit different. The diamond bright is more durable and comes with a longer warranty. But you're going to see a lot of the same problems both in a plaster pool and to some extent a diamond bright pool with a colored finish. And I think there should be some note if you're going to get a pool with colored finish or if you're taking care of a pool that has colored plaster, the lighter the gray as far as like a light gray color, the more of these defects are going to be noticeable. And I think if you just have a pure white plaster pool, you're not going to see a lot of this usually until maybe a cloudy day. And if you stand there and look at your pool, you're going to notice a lot of different things. It's kind of like standing in front of your driveway and looking at your driveway and seeing how it looks. And there's going to be some kind of discoloration, some kind of patterns in there. Because basically, you're not going to get a pure looking pool if you're going to use plaster. There's always going to be something that you're going to see. It's not like looking at your bathtub when it's first, you know, when you have it, when you buy a new house or you just had your bathtub reglazed. It's this nice white looking coat. You're not going to have that same thing with a plaster pool. And there are a lot of different things that are not defects, but they are natural occurring in plaster. The first one I like to address is called modeling. And this is, you know, hydration or trap moisture is the other terms you're going to hear. And I'll just read you here this because I think this is important to note that the pool does have a modeled appearance as described by both the National Spa and Pool Institute's guidelines, the NSPI, and the National Plaster Council, NPC, which is a really well-known organization, by the way. And I think this, these guidelines uh, state that the pool finish shall be uniform in shade of color, subject to normal cement plaster modeling and shading. The guidelines further state that plaster is hand troweled cement is a hand troweled cement product. Variations in shading, including shadowing, streaking, and discoloration, are a normal occurrence and not considered a deficiency or a defect. And so, basically, the different colorations you're going to see. In a pool, a plaster pool, especially if it has color in the plaster, is a perfectly normal aspect of cement. And if you walk down your street, let's say you go for a walk with your dog, look at all the cement around you and you're going to see different shades of color. And this is normal and this is kind of the same thing with your pool, except your pool has water in it and you paid $100,000 for it. And so therefore, you probably don't want to see that in there, but it's just a normal thing when you have a plaster pool. So if you do see this modeling or these patterns in your pool surface, it's something that is just natural and normal. Although there are some defects of plaster, and I'll cover a few of these here for you. One of the most common ones that I see here in California is what we call calcium nodules. And these are like almost like volcano type eruptions of white calcium, calcium carbonate actually to be exact formations. You'll see them on the side of the pool, on the bottom of the pool. And you may be wondering why you didn't notice it when you first had your pool plastered. They don't usually appear until about a year to maybe two or three years later. And basically, there's just an air pocket in the plaster. And the pool is delaminated right there. And then the calcium carbonate comes out. And it'll form this volcano-type kind of eruption on the surface. And this is something that, you know, maybe during the process, they did you know they were going too fast and they left these pockets in the plaster causing these nodules to appear there really isn't a lot you can do about curing them 
some I've had some success with kind of just sanding them down in some respects with there's a, a device that connects to your pool pole called a stain eraser. They also have like a rust stone you can attach to your pool pole. You can knock the heads of these things off, but they're going to be there and it's very common to see them appear a few years later. And sometimes you're lucky you only have one or two of them. Other times you're unlucky and you have a bunch of them and they're all over the pool. So you can maybe get the pool replastered in the future, kind of live with it as long as you can and then replaster the pool. If, if there's a, a bunch of them that are in the plaster, I definitely would recommend that in the future. But there's one of those things where it's something that you don't notice right away. And two or three years later, you know, the builder, more than likely the warranty on that plaster has already expired. And so hopefully keep your fingers crossed that if you had a new plaster pool, you're not going to see these calcium nodules appear. There's also something called white spotting. And this is usually, you know, when you have a dark colored plaster pool. And again, coloring the plaster is one of those things where it's kind of a mixed bag because it looks beautiful. But you can see a lot of defects. You can see a lot of the modeling, which is not a defect, in the plaster pretty much right away after it's finished. But there's something called white spotting. And if you're a pool pro, you've probably seen this on a dark plaster pool. It looks like maybe someone dropped a trichlor tablet in there and it stained it. But this is basically just the plaster mix. And it may be referred to as spot etching by the pool plaster. And they add calcium chloride to the plaster mix. And this in you know, contributes to the plaster being more porous. And then of course, if you know anything about cement, there's some shrinkage and micro cracking that goes on. And so this will happen. And then you're going to see the spot become lighter and lighter and the color around the plaster is going to remain darker. And so you'll get the white spotting. And then you have discoloration of the plaster. And this is again for if they, they add calcium chloride as an accelerator and modeling is part of the natural part of this, but there may also be some trowel marks you may see in there. And, you know, these are things that just aren't quite modeling because they look almost like they're made by a tool. And so you may see this also in there. And this is all part of, you know, it's done by hand. And it's one of those things where if you look at your driveway or if you had a big driveway completed, you're going to see all of this in there also, but not quite to the extent Especially if you don't color the plaster or color your cement, I should say, sorry, in your driveway. You're not going to see a lot of this. And of course, there's crazing and cracking. And that's, again, a natural part of the cement. And sometimes you'll see a lot of this in a pool that just has been plastered. Especially on the step areas. If you have like a, a raised step in the deep end, you're going to see a lot of this because the crazing and cracking are caused by excessive drying of the plaster before the pool is filled. And if you have like an extended step in the deep end, this is probably the last part of the pool that gets filled. And so it's going to be hit by the sun. It may dry out and you're going to see a lot of that kind of crazing and cracking on that step. And I've seen this a lot in pools that have like a step in the deep end and it's a colored plaster pool. And then you have etching, which basically is the delamination and spalling. Etching occurs when the plaster is separated from a previous plaster layer. So basically, this is just a soft spot in the plaster that's degraded. And this occurs mainly when they use excess stand in the aggregate and the plaster mix or they have excess water and they have a lower cement concentration in the mix. So if you have a good plaster, this won't happen because they know how to mix the plaster mix where they'll prevent this kind of etching. And definitely you want to make sure you hire a licensed pool contractor to replaster your pool or the plaster your pool but you're going to see those troll marks sometimes you'll see other marks in the pool and some of it again is just natural discoloration and modeling others are from the actual process of putting the plaster in the pool and i've seen lots of problems after the pool has been plastered uh, some of the worst that i've seen is when the pool was being filled and it was a colored plaster pool and the customer was going to bed and they thought they should turn the water off. They didn't want to overflow the pool. And so there was still two feet of water or there was still two feet left that needed to be filled. They turned the water off and then they turned it back on the next morning. But around the entire pool is a one inch light area because the water settled there overnight. And then when they ref and then when they filled it up completely, you can really see this area where the water was just settling at because the plaster it's basically just like cement and it was still 
curing and when they stop the water it's going to leave that ring around there so when you're filling a plaster pool never stop the water fill until it's completely full another thing i've seen is someone who filled the pool from the auto fill line this is convenient because it's on the side of the pool already and you just turn on the water and it starts to fill but you'll notice if you've ever taken care of a pool a darker plaster pool that was filled like this you're going to see the area where the water was dripping into the pool or trickling down into the pool and you're going to see a white line indicating you know going down to the deep end where they turned that autofill on so the only way to really fill a pool correctly is with a garden hose with a towel taped on it and in the deep end and that way you don't have these marks on the pool surface because it's basically again like wet cement so it's very very um, susceptible to any kind of marks left on it. I've seen people get in their pool after the first day it was filled and I see their hand and footprints in there. Same thing if a dog gets in there. I had this pool that was done, it was beautiful and it had this really large step entryway and the dogs got in there after it was filled and they walked all on top of that step and you can see the dog footprints still in there and till this day the footprints are still on this plaster. Again, it was colored plaster, so more defects were visible. So when a builder tells you not to go in the pool for at least two weeks, he's actually trying to protect the surface from having kind of these marks on there. Not defects, but after the fact, when it was wet, if someone were to walk on it the first day or to brush the pool, I've seen a lot of this too, where the homeowner gets a little bit over anxious or overzealous and they figure that, you know, the brush, the plaster dust, why not use a stainless steel brush because it's going to be a lot better. It'll grip the surface. It'll really push that dust away. But you're going to see all the brush marks on the side of the wall. And I've seen people that are that vacuum their pool the first week because they want to get all that plaster dust out. You see the wheel marks on the bottom and those wheel marks pretty much stay in the plaster forever. So definitely treat the newly plastered pool as wet cement and it has water in it. And so it looks inviting, but it's still wet. And it's the same thing if you walked across a driveway that was just cemented. You're going to leave marks on it. And the same thing with the pool. And a question I'm often asked is, can these things be reversed? The, you know, the water line, if you stop the fill early, that really can't be reversed unless you drain it and do a really aggressive acid wash. Sometimes a light acid wash will remove footprints on the bottom. But then you drain the pool that was just filled to do that. So that may not be the best course. You might have to just live with footprints in the pool. And it's just part of the design now. So plaster is probably the surface type where you're going to see the most defects and the most problems. If you want a pool that's much more uniform, that's not going to have these kind of problems, then I really recommend going with Pebble Tech because you're not going to have any kind of variation as you would have in the plaster color. And the Pebble Tech is much more durable and stain resistant. You're not going to see the modeling. You're not going to see the trowel marks because it's basically river rock. You're not going to see these other defects like the the calcium nodules popping up and other things that you would normally see in a plaster pool. But of course, Pebble Tech is not immune from defects. And I mentioned that it's a river rock and it's basically just river rock and they put it on the surface of the pool. And since river rock is mined or, you know, it's a material that they gather. And if you know anything about river rock you're gonna you know that sometimes there's metal that gets in there so they do the best they can to remove all the metals from the pebble tech before they put it in the pool however sometimes there's metal in some of the pebbles and you'll notice usually within the first month or two once the pebble tech pool is filled you're going to see little rust stains appearing sometimes the size of a pencil eraser other times the size of a penny or a quarter I've seen them as large as a half dollar before when there is a cluster of these. And basically the builder warranties the Pebble Tech. I believe it's a 10 year warranty. And they'll come back and they'll actually get a small pick and take out the bad pebbles. And this usually will take care of the rust stains. Again, they vary in size, but the most common ones are the size of a pencil eraser or the size of a penny. And they can take those bad stones out that are in the mix and that'll cure the rust stain in the pool. And I've seen Pebble Tech where they had maybe two or three of these marks in the pool. I've seen other Pebble Techs where they had 20 or 30. It's one of those things where if metal does get into the mix, it's usually a regional problem. So one year in Hawaii, they had tons of Pebble Tech pools that had this problem. 
I know here in Southern California, there was a run of them back in, you know, the mid 2015 or 16 when you had a lot of pools that had these rust stains that would pop up. And that's from bad pebble tech or pebble tech that actually had metal or they had rocks with metal in it. And of course, when you, when they get wet, the rust stain starts to come out or the rust starts to come out and it forms that stain. So you may see a big area the size of a penny, but it's only one little stone that's causing that and they just chip that out and then the stain will go away. And again, this is something that comes out within the first month or two once you had the pool filled. You should notice these right away and definitely call the builder and they'll come out and fix it. It's not a big deal for them to come out and fix it. They see it all the time and you shouldn't just let it go because it is definitely a defect in the Pebble Tech that the builder can come out and take care of. Another common problem with Pebble Tech and something that you don't think about, but since it is river rock, it's going to attract calcium buildup at a level that you wouldn't see in a plaster pool because the pebble tech is basically a river rock you're going to see the calcium build up a lot more definite than you would see it in a plaster pool and if you have a darker pebble tech pool you're going to see a lot of white areas usually in the slope of the pool in the deep end you'll see this sometimes on the step areas and the corners and this is just calcium build up in the pebble tech there's not a lot you can do about it. You can try to keep your pool within the LSI in the more balanced range or maybe just a little bit more aggressive so that you don't have the calcium buildup. However, it's just going to happen over time. And in certain areas where you have a lot of hard water, you're going to get a lot more of this calcium buildup on the Pebble Tech. The only real solution is to drain the pool and then have the entire Pebble Tech surface bead blasted by a bead blasting or glass beading company. They'll come out there and you've probably seen the glass beading on the tile line. This is going to be for the entire surface of the pool. And this is, of course, a little bit expensive because you're not just doing the tile line, you're doing the whole pool surface. So you can figure that if you have maybe a 10,000 gallon Pebble Tech pool, it's going to cost you about $1,500 to $2,000 to have the entire surface bead blasted. And this is something that you probably may have to do every three or four years in some areas. My dad lives in Indio, California. They have really hard water. He has an 8,000 gallon Pebble Tech pool and he drains that every year or he has it drained every year, and then they bead blast it, and it's somewhere around 1000 or $1,200 to have that done every year out there. So this is something that you should be aware of with Pebble Tech, that you are going to see some discoloration in the Pebble Tech pool, not because of the surface, but because of the calcium buildup. And the darker the Pebble Tech, the more you're going to see this. And it looks almost like the Pebble Tech is faded in some areas, when it's actually covered by the calcium, making it lighter, and then you're going to have darker areas where there's no calcium. So just be aware that this is something that will happen over time. In just about every Pebble Tech pool that I've seen, you're going to have some kind of calcium uh, developing on the surface type. Now, the other surface types that are not quite popular in California are fiberglass and vinyl. The vinyl surface is very susceptible to staining, so there's really no defects per se when they put the vinyl liner in. Usually it's a really beautiful pattern and it looks great, but you have to be really careful with the vinyl pool because it stains extremely easy. So if you put a bag of Calhypo or a pound of Calhypo in there and you just sprinkle it on the bottom of the vinyl pool, and let's say you have a beautiful blue pattern, chances are that the next day you're going to see this white staining on the surface and that's from the Calhypo. That in a plaster pool or pebble tech pool it won't affect the surface at all, but in a vinyl pool, you could have some staining from something as simple as Calhypo. Trichlor granulars will definitely stain it. If you're using trichlor tablets in the floater, if one of those were to fall out onto the vinyl surface, you're going to have a you know circle-shaped stain or burn mark. Usually it's white with some brown on it, and this is something that's permanent and you can't really fix it. So if you do get a vinyl pool, just note that it's highly susceptible to staining any kind of metal object. If the kids are playing with Hot Wheel cars in there or playing with anything with batteries and they leave them on the bottom of the vinyl liner, chances are you're going to have a really ugly dark brown rust stain on the bottom of the pool and this is something that's not fixable. You just have to get a new liner. So just be very cautious with your vinyl liner pool. Keep all metal out of that pool. I wouldn't even recommend the kids play with coins in there. They could stain the vinyl liner and definitely any kind of chlorine product that's powder or in a tablet form can stain the vinyl liner permanently. 
And last, we have the fiberglass surface, which is not very common here. There's two different types of fiberglass pools. You can have a built-in pool. It's very similar to a plaster pool. We have coping where they put a gunite in the pool and then they do a gel coat. They spray on the fiberglass. The problem with the spray on type fiberglass pools is that after a while the gel coat starts to come off and you'll notice this when you brush the pool, a bunch of white powder is going to come off the sides. Or if you're swimming, the pool's going to turn cloudy because you have a lot of the gel coating coming off. There's no cure for this except draining it and then putting another gel coating on, which is a huge process. I witnessed one of these being done. And so they cover everything around the house in plastic. They cover the fence. They even cover some of the neighbor's yard. They cover all the equipment. And they actually put saran wrap around all the equipment and the one that I saw them do. And then they spray this gel coat on. They're wearing these hazmat suits. It's like a real huge process. They got to make sure it's not windy out. And this is something that is the only way to cure the, you know, the gel coat coming off a fi fiberglass pool. The other type are the drop-in fiberglass pools in my area. And these are just a shell that they bring into the backyard with a crane and they drop it in. These are actually really durable. The gel coating on these I find to be really excellent and I don't really have much many problems with it, with it coming off on these. But the problem I do see developing on these particular fiberglass spools to drop and shell is that there's a scum line that develops on these because there's no tile usually and there's really no coping. So it's just the fiberglass all the way to the top and a lot of scum builds up. So you can actually you know, use the enzyme in there to keep this from happening and just use a weekly dose of the enzyme. And you can scrape it off pretty well. You just gotta make sure you don't use anything abrasive to scratch the fiberglass. And fiberglass tends to stain just as easily as a vinyl lined pool. So any kind of metal that gets in there, any kind of you know chlorine, like if you were to drop a tablet in there, of course the acid would burn the fiberglass pretty badly that's in the tablet. So be really careful with what you put in the fiberglass pool. A lot of the fiberglass pool companies will void the warranty if you use trichlor tablets in a floater or trichlor tablets of any kind in, in those pools. So just be aware that a lot of the warranty is voided with certain chemicals that you're going to use in the pool, specifically trichlor tablets, and just be aware that they stain really easily. So you don't want to put any kind of metal in a fiberglass pool. The good news is that any kind of metal staining in, in a fiberglass pool is usually easily reversed with ascorbic acid or vitamin C tablet. You rub off, you can rub off the rust stain pretty easily. And in some cases in a fresh plaster pool, if someone were to drop, you know, something metal in there, I've seen like staples from a roof falling off into there. I had a plaster pool that was just done and they were redoing the roof and a lot of the staples they used came off and fell into the pool. I was fortunate enough to get them out of the pool and they use ascorbic acid on it and I was able to reverse it. As long as the plaster is pretty fresh or the stain is pretty fresh, I should say, then you can probably remove it with ascorbic acid in a plaster pool. Uh, but if you let it sit there for a long time in a plaster pool, it's really hard to remove the metal stain. So sometimes the stains can be reversed. The best, of course, thing to do is to prevent any kind of metal from getting in your plaster pool, your vinyl pool, your pebble tech pool. I've seen metal staining in pebble tech pool as well or your fiberglass pool. And I, I know I covered a lot of ground here, but a lot of pool, pool pros send me photos all the time and they want me to identify a stain or some kind of surface problem with the pool. And I think this is a good prepper for, for you if you're out there and you're dealing with all different surface types. When you see something, it may just be the plaster itself or the mix. There may be a real defect. I mentioned some of those at the beginning. And it may just be a stain of some kind from some metal falling into the pool. And it's, as you get experience out there, you're going to be able to identify these and also explain them to your customers so they don't freak out when they see something in their pool. You can calm them down. And I really advise no one to be out there sitting in front of their pool and looking at the surface and watching it all day long. You certainly don't sit out in front of your new driveway and look at the cement all day for defects. And you shouldn't be doing that with your pool. It's going to be something that naturally has different colorations and different variations. And I think some people are bothered more by it than others. And it's just one of those things where it's just something that you're going to have to deal with and live with. And I hope this clears up some of the things you're looking at at your pool surface. It will help you to prevent any kind of staining in your vinyl or fiberglass pool. If you're looking for other podcasts I recorded, you can find them on my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, on the 
banner there. You can click on the podcast icon. That'll take you to a drop-down menu of over 1,100 podcasts that I've recorded. If you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more about that at PoolGuyCoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great your week, and God bless. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.